recently, in fact, on launch, reviewed Age of Empires 4, and the video absolutely blew up relative to normal standards. And honestly, it left me wondering many, many things. But the topic of this video is going to be, now that Age of Empires is out in the wild, now that all of us, the public, now that we've all had a chance to get our grubby little hands on it, what do we think of it? How did we receive it? Is Age of Empires worth it? I'm going to try to answer all of these questions and delve a little deeper into what I'm describing as a controversially positive launch. Let's discuss Age of Empires 4 in all of its glory. My name is Jumbo Pixel. smash the like button and let's jump straight in. So as I said at the start of the video, I made my own review and it absolutely blew up. And with that attention comes a lot of good and bad things. The good, obviously, the views, the attention for the channel, hoy ho hoy, self-interested me is very pleased. But it's not just that, I also get to hear a lot more feedback from a lot more people than I would usually hear from. Some of it really constructive, great stuff that helped inform this video. Other stuff perhaps less useful. I now, for example, know that shortening the Holy Roman Empire into simply Romans in a game where there are no other Romans is absolutely not acceptable in any way, shape or form. And I will now use the historically accurate, fully spoken Holy Roman Empire from now on when referring to the Romans. But that's not the point of this video. It's actually about the wider reception that I heard. And more broadly about the launch of Age of Empires 4, which on all accounts, even if you just look at Steam player numbers alone, is an incredible success. And I mean, in many ways we should expect that, right? This is a franchise that is decades old. So not only does it carry a historical legacy of really being one of the founding fathers for real-time strategy games on PC, but also, I think more broadly, a legacy series within the wider strategy genre, right? Age of Empires, a classic. And now, as I said at the start, it's received a new edition, and one that people are playing and generally liking. So in this video, I think first and foremost, let's take a look at the bad. And I'm sorry, I am going to bore you with my voice for many more minutes. You'll just have to make do, friends. <laughs> anyway... Firstly, I want to start with the bad. It is the controversial stuff. Let's get it out of the way. How has Age of Empires 4 underperformed? How has it disappointed people? Granted, not all people, but what are the leading concerns with its launch? First and foremost, I think we have to tackle the price. Many people have been disappointed by the price of Age of Empires, particularly on Steam. However, of course, this is a double-edged blade and something I'll get to in the good side, but there is absolutely the Game Pass option screaming out from the sidelines here. But it is worth noting that many people were disappointed with the price. Next up, many people consider Age of Empires 4 at launch with, for example, only eight playable civilizations, many of them very similar to one another, with a couple of notable exceptions. Here's looking at you, the Mongols. And for that reason, some players have argued that Age of Empires 4 is essentially just a stripped back version of Age of Empires 2. Take the definitive, definitive Age of Empires 2 experience, and you really maybe struggle to find many ways that Age of Empires 4 has revolutionized that. Building onto that, I suppose an argument that I've heard a lot as well is that it just hasn't innovated enough. People love to draw comparisons to Total War, the franchise, and I don't think that's necessarily entirely fair or accurate, but it is a somewhat comparable real-time strategy experience, and if you look at that franchise and then you compare it to the Age of Empires franchise, I can definitely see how some people could argue that Total War, rightly or wrongly, has innovated a lot while the Age of Empires experience has, for the most part, remained very much the same. Take that as you will. And finally, I think one of the key considerations, a couple of really fundamental gameplay features that Age of Empires 4 doesn't have or is missing. Uh, lots of people have said, why can't I have more than 200 populations? It's 2021 for crying out loud. Others note, rightly so, that the game has launched without custom maps and custom modding. This is not too dissimilar from recent launches, here's looking at you, humankind, 
but that doesn't really make it acceptable for a triple A release. And on that front, while I will be for the most part objective for the majority of this video until the end, I do have to agree with that sentiment. Now, what about the good? Let's do Age of Empires in review from launch. The good. I think first and foremost the accessibility of Age of Empires 4, and I'm really specifically talking about the fact that it has launched on Xbox Game Pass, is a really great thing. We cover it in the bad section that the price is high and boy is it what! But also, it's on Game Pass, which makes it actually strikingly affordable. Even if you don't have a dollar free version for a month, you can probably pick up Game Pass for PC. No, it is not on console. You can probably pick up Game Pass for PC for around $10 a month and try out Age of Empires. The downside, of course, it may not stay on Game Pass forever. So if you like it, you're gonna end up arguably paying for it for many months and then buying it anyway, hopefully at a discounted price. So you end up roughly on par with where you would have been, but there's no guaranteeing that you could very much be buying this game twice that way. I think that uh, there are a few really notable things that the game does do well. Not only has it launched with a minimum spec mode, but you should probably be able to run this on many systems, rightly or wrongly. Age of Empires is not a difficult game to run, yet it does come with many, uh, added additional features and benefits that we might expect from a modern game. 4K textures, for example. What are they uh, applying themselves to? Perhaps not as much as other titles, but they are there, and they're good looking, they're clean, so too are the new animations and menus, so on and so forth. Very crisp and clean, but also very true to the Age of Empires style, and indeed that is one of the strengths of Age of Empires 4. If you like the old style, you will love this modernized, somewhat version of that. Of course, the game also launched with a new victory condition, and even though it launched with a limited number of sieves, the game that uh, has provided us with some new iterations. More broadly, I'm thinking the Mongols. They come to mind just immediately uh, as a sieve in this game that is different, uh, slightly innovative relative to the traditional Age of Empires experience, and actually one that I had a little bit of fun playing with uh, in my downtime. So credit to the places where AoE4 has innovated. I think, generally speaking, they've been fairly well received, positive innovations, and I'd like to see more of them moving forward in future DLCs, which I'm sure, almost certainly, we're guaranteed to see. I think also uh, some of the other features around the edges, like the little historical movies that give you some extra detail, that those real life cutscenes, <laughs> if you want to call them that, I think they're kind of fun. And some other other iterations along the way as well help to shape more of a modernized, but still very much true to its roots, Age of Empires experience. Now in the sort of third part of this video, now that we've introduced AoE, we've done the bad and the good, I suppose that makes it the fourth, if you want to count the introduction as a part, academics stand aside, let's talk a little bit uh, more on the opinion side, on expectations, on reactions, on how we've received AoE and what we should expect from it moving forward. Age of Empires 4, as I said at the start of the video in my introduction to this piece, I think received a controversially positive launch. And I say that not because the positivity was necessarily controversial, but because it was both of those things. Age of Empires 4 has broadly been received really well by the community, I think for two reasons. It stuck with its roots, but did it in a way that innovated around the fringes and altogether delivered it in a polished, good performing package. And secondly, it's been more accessible to the masses than ever. If Age of Empires 4 had just launched on Steam and I had had to pay my 130 New Zealand dollars to get my definitive edition, which was not a great step above the default edition, I would have, to be honest, felt a little disappointed. 130 bucks for Age of Empires 2 again? Ah, it's a hard sell. I would have bought it anyway. I would have played it anyway. Don't get me wrong but I would have felt a little bit like my $130 could have been better spent elsewhere. However, I think the fact that I have the choice to buy it on Steam now outright for a premium, or wait until later, but crucially, to play it through Game Pass for PC, where it will likely stay for at least a few months, if not for a very long time, I feel like 
that is really Age of Empires 4's saving grace. At a $130 title, it's, like I say, a tough sell that I would have bought anyway, but a tough sell. But knowing that it's also a Game Pass feature where I can play it for somewhere between $1 to $10 for my first one to maybe 10 months, I feel like that is a successful launch and a package that has come together to deliver an enjoyable Age of Empires experience. Did it break the mold? To be honest, no. Is it enjoyable and well-polished? Yes. Is it accessible? Yes. Is it a success? As I left it hanging in my review, I think more broadly that is less up to me and more up to you. But for what my two cents are worth, this is a pretty enjoyable Age of Empires game. And a chance for players new and old to get a really good feeling Age of Empires experience for a price that they are willing to pay. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Jumbo Pixel. Do stick around for more, and I'll see you next time.